Welcome to True Health Tuesday, and the truth will set you free. Genetics and genetic expression, because you're going to see a lot coming up in the, the news, and not, not the regular CNN news, but there's a lot of information about genetics from certain Oh, viruses, bacteria, fungus, all that stuff. So it's important that you know, because a lot of people are afraid of their genetics. And, and a lot of doctors are completely ignorant that some of these things, because we're talking critical thinking and, and how this works. So are you a slave to your genes? You know, how many times have you heard, it runs in my family? You know, heart disease. Really, your great grandpa didn't have it. Okay. Yeah, but now do diet, lifestyle, other factors have um, a factor in this or of gen genes and genetic expression? So we're going to talk about that. Now, if you're watching the Dr. B VIP site, this will continue uninterrupted uh, because there are some things in here that I'm really cutting the edge on this time. So I don't know if this will play on YouTube or we'll have to go to Facebook jail or whatever. Okay, but, but on Dr. BVIP, it's going to go through. Next week is going to be a little different because somebody is getting married. Victor is getting married. And congratulations, buddy, you're going to love it. It's so much fun. I've done it three times. Okay, I mean, it's a blast. The third time is the charm for me. Thank God I ain't going to do it again. Okay, but you're going to have a ball. God bless you. Okay, now... Um, eventually, this is all going to be on Extreme Health Academy, so I really support those guys. Great forums, everything. Now, we're talking about genetic and genetic expression. Um, but if you've noticed about society, anxiety and stress can affect your genes. They really can. So when you look at genes, and you're going to find out that, that we're gifted with, with certain set of uh, genes and what the Human Genome Project is, but if you're under stress, and let's say that you've been, you know, under the assumption that you had inalienable rights that couldn't be separated from you, that you were in a country that valued freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and then all of a sudden the schools and everything are closed. Well, those were illegal actions, okay, according to the Supreme Court, because it turns out that for a crime to exist, there must be an injured party. There can be no sanction or penalty imposed on one because of exercise of constitutional rights. And you do have a constitutional right to have a business, to go to church, to have freedom of assembly. So those rules, even though that they, they you know, there was a massive pandemic or war or anything else, they can't be, they can't be um, um, put on the back burner. So just know that those actions were illegal. And, you know, we are trying to do a recall of the emperor in California, and he just doesn't agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, I, I saw this one thing on satire, and, and the satire, the society is so s bizarre that, that the satire is actually assumed to be real news. Okay, so now we're um, towards the, the middle, towards the end of, of um, May, and, and if you've known this over the last year and a half, you've had a little bit of freedom then taken away, a little bit of freedom then taken away. Okay, there is a purpose behind this, and this is why I'm, I, this might make it, it might not. The Rape of the Mind is an interesting book by Juiced Merlot. Uh, each wave of terrorizing creates its effect more easily after a breathing spell than uh, the one that preceded it because people are still disturbed by their previous experience. Morality becomes lower and lower, and the psychological effects of each new propaganda campaign becomes stronger. It reaches a public that's already softened up. You know, two weeks to flatten the curve, um, just your business is essential, not essential, and then it will be open by July. Boom. No, we'll be open by June. Boom. Okay, no, the schools will be open. Boom. Okay, no, you can go back to... Okay, this has been a year and a half. Year and a half. Okay, so if you realize that it's go we've had a little bit of freedom here in this country, Look, think for the third wave, think for the fourth wave, think for the fifth wave, and, and eventually people will forget why you're actually wearing a mask or social distancing. Now, if you think this is illogical, and if you're having trouble com communicating intelligently with people that are in a great panic, you're not alone. 
the rape of the mind goes on. Logic can be met with logic. Well, illogic cannot. It confuses those who think straight. The big lie and monotonously re repeated nonsense have more emotional appeal logic and reason, than logic and reason. Well, people are still searching for reasonable counterarguments to the first lie. The totalitarians can assault them with another. It's interesting. Propaganda? Just if you're wondering, you know, I thought we had a government in control. I thought, you know, we elected these people. Okay, you know, they're supposed to, you know, listen to us. Propaganda 1929, I think it was, by Edward Bernays. The conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government, which is the true ruling power of our country. You don't need to look at the Illuminati or, or the Rothschilds or, or the power of the Pope or the Church of England or all these things, even though those are legit. Okay, if, when you research it, there, there really is something going on. But know that you are being propagandized. Now, they change propaganda to public relations because that sounds better. Now, you see, I, I've put this up before because you were told, and we're, we're talking about genetic and genetic expression. Are you all defective um, for being on this planet? Do you need to be afraid of this planet? Because what, we, what were you told last year? One person can infect 2.4 people, okay? Now, why can't one person infect 100 people with a virus? Well, because a virus is a well-organized molecular parasite. They're not alive, okay? And in fact, I got to sneeze on you, but you got to be susceptible. So when you hear this blatant lie of one person infected three, those three are going to infect nine. The nine are going to infect 27. The 27 are going to infect more. And pretty soon you're all going to die. Okay, that assumes 100% infectivity, 100% transmissibility. Okay, and in, so how many people are already immune to it? How many people did develop antibodies? Do you, you understand? You know, so, but when a lie is repeated over and over and over, logic doesn't come into it. It's just panic. It's just panic. So a virus, and, and again, we're talking about genetic and genetic expression. A virus is not alive. It uses host DNA and RNA to replicate. Some people can say it's alive because when it attacks, because it has to utilize your host DNA or RNA to replicate. Okay, so that means you've got to be a susceptible host. Now, 45% um, of your genetic information in our DNA is viral. Since we're talking about genetic expression, realize that viruses around our world, without viruses, we would not exist. So the Purell crowd, the mass crowd, okay, the shield crowd, okay, there hasn't been one evidence of a viral transmission outside in casual contact in the entire world. Okay, then that's, I thought that was, was interesting. Because it's almost like, you know, we're designed to be here. Now, your double-stranded DNA is a little virus hotel. Virus is responsible for two critical functions in nature. Variation and adaptation. Yes, it is the virus behind much of what that term evolution is. Many viruses can change in their response to alterations in the environment, sort of like a chameleon. I mean, I mean it's interesting that, that when you look at this, um, viruses, you know, like coronaviruses, influenza viruses, I mean, influenza, you know where they came up with influenza? It's influenced by the moon. Okay, they thought full moons would do it. Okay, so, so we take a lot of these urban legends and turn it into medical sounding terms. Viruses are an integral part of the ecosystem, including the human body. Isn't that interesting? So does that mean that we have to take care of our microbiome? that we actually have to take care of that. Most viruses are not harmful. In fact, have played an important role in evolution and maintaining healthy ecosystems. If you look at Zach Bush's work, I mean, brilliant, talks about how mitochondria, without mitochondria and the viruses in there, that we mammals wouldn't be giving live birth. Um, they're able to move genetic information in between hosts, but we still do not fully understand how this is influenced and continues to influence the evolution of the species.
Yes, they don't understand it, but they're just going to limit it. Okay, they're going to do something that they don't understand. And Rudolf Virchow, now, now the father of the germ theory, um, if I could live my life over again, I would devote it to proving that germs seek their natural habitat, disease tissue, rather than being cause of disease. Flies don't cause garbage. And that makes a heck of a lot of sense. So when somebody, a chew, when somebody says, where did you catch that? You say, no, I earned it. I worked my butt off. I had poor diet. You know, I drank heavy and I didn't sleep well. So I tried to weaken my immune system. You know what I mean? You don't catch stuff. You have to earn it. Okay, so, so who did you get it from? No, I got it from myself because I had a weak in the immune system. Does that, does that make more sense? Because that's reality. I mean, we can look at, um, the, and these are the disease or infectivity rates of polio, measles, pertussis, tetanus, mumps, rubella, diphtheria, chickenpox, hepatitis B, and HIB. And, and the before any vaccines, before any vaccine. So these are, you know, viruses and bacteria and stuff, okay? So, uh, so what was the death rates? Everyone error, the population not harmed, you're looking at 99 point minimum three nines, 99.999, okay? So let's just take that highest death rate or not death rate. Okay, so this means 99.998% of people not dead from 1900 to 1920. Okay, now, so think of that. Where did the fear come from? Now, now again, when you're looking at immune systems and genetic and genetic expression, um, what percentage was harmed and what percentage was not harmed? Would you think that it might be behoove us to look at the people that are sick or dying from a certain disease, okay, and not just give everybody a medicine in the population? Now, genetics, it's a study of, of heredity because you have thousands of generations inside of you. That means your great, great, great grandpa and your great, great, great grandma who survived you know, smallpox, who survived all the zoonotic diseases if you were from Northern Europe. They survived other diseases if you're from Central America. Okay, they survived other diseases if you're from Japan. Okay, I mean, if, if you grew up in Northern Europe, they develop peroxomes in your liver so you can metabolize alcohol. If you were in North America, you didn't have those peroxomes, okay? That's why it was called fire water. So you have these adaptations around for forever. Now, some misunderstood genetics. All of these are not true. Every aspect of biology can be predicted from its genes. That's not true. Um, genes controlled for a single anatomic behavior, that's not true. In fact, that's what funded the Human Genome Project. They thought, oh my God, if we can find one gene for one protein, we can give you a drug to stop that gene, to alter your genetic expression. Okay, that, that's huge, because that means that they can find the shopping gene and save men a lot of money, or women a lot of money, okay? They can find the gambling gene to change society, okay? And they, it turned out they couldn't do it. Genes are a blueprint for an organism's form of behavior. That's not true, and genes are uninterrupted sections of DNA that code only for a single protein. Totally not true. So Human Genome Project started, or planned in 84, started in 1990, finished in 2003. Now, what they thought is the human body produces about 100,000 um, proteins, so there should be about 100,000 genes. Turns out we have about the same genes as a mice or fruit flies. So how does that work? Okay, well, here's a guy that questioned it, and this is the, the idea of a control above the gene. See, you've got, you've got cells that can produce, produce genes that cause cancer and cause Alzheimer's. You have cells that can reverse Alzheimer's and reverse cancer. So what turns those on and what turns those off? Now, this one at Duke University, Randy Jertle and his postdoctoral Robert, Robert Waterland, they got these agouti mice. And these mice, they're bred for study, okay? They're fat, sick, they're predisposed to diabetes. They're, they're really not healthy animals. But they got an idea. What if we change the mother's diet before gestation? Would that change the offspring? Okay, sure enough. And not only were they um, 
uh, they changed. The mice were prone to cancer and diabetes, life-shortening diseases. Um, they, they changed their diet. And what they did is they put onions, garlic, beets, Okay, and this is a diet uh, rich in methyl donors. So, it, you know, it's something that humans could, should also take too. Um, and the, the mice were slender and mousy brown, not the yellow fat mice. And they didn't have the susceptibility to cancer and they lived to an old age. It was like, wait a second, wait a second. Does that mean that we can control an expression? We can, we can change our genetic expression? Absolutely. Okay, based on the stimulus. So, the key is what turns a gene on and what turns a gene off. Now, some, some genes can cause cancer, some can reverse it. Now, this, the, that's a cancer rate going up from 1900 to 1990. Okay, you'll see a hockey stick there after 1990, but is, do genes change in 100 years? No. What's the, the, the causative factor that changes that genetic expression? Cancer, um, Safe Read, I mean, brilliant, brilliant book. Cancer is not, um, it's, a, it's a metabolic disease. So if you're, just think of the agouti mice, okay? You change the diet of the mother before gestation, okay, or before impregnation, okay, that, that, that the offspring changes their entire world, their entire makeup, how they're going to adapt to the planet. So if we're seeing a decline in health, okay, with a rise of chronic diseases, does that mean perhaps we're altering how the mother is or how the father's expression is, or that there's some type of environmental factor that changes genetic expression. Does that make sense? Yes or yes? Yeah. Okay. Cancer is a metabolic disease, not, not genetic. Um, age, viral infections, hypoxia, inflammation, environmental toxins, radiation, carcinogens, all of these can change genetic expression. Now you get 46 chromosomes, 23 from mom, 23 from dad. And, and this is amazing. Of course, now you have to ask the pronoun, which one is the mom and dad? No, see what I mean? You, even though it, it's so sarcastic, okay, people will say, you offended me. Okay, good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you got a mother and a father, a male and a female. Okay, really you do. Okay. And they have to deposit chromosomes. They really, really do. Okay, now, now when you look at it, DNA, and, and this is like a magnet, okay, where, where when you're looking at the PCR test for the virus, they have half of that ladder, but it's set up with these magnets, like guanidine, adenine, uh, thymine, cytosine. They have their mate on the other side, and you put them in different uh, patterns, and that creates, these are, they're nucleotides, they create a protein. And so that protein that they build together is what you, um, what, what you need. So your cells, literally, from information from the environment, are going to produce certain proteins. This is important. Each type of protein does only one job. But, so you can assemble those into different functioning units. Because a protein can literally you know, build a, a repair a kidney cell, repair a liver cell, repair a brain cell. Now, how many copies can you get out of the DNA? We have a thing on the end of it called telomere. And, and the way it's described is like um, a plastic coating on, on a shoelace. But it's literally, if that's long and healthy, you can do a lot more copies of this. Now, telomeres, the longer the telomere, the longer and longevity you have, or the more proteins that you can uh, convert. The shorter the telomeres are premature aging. And you might think, wait a second. So if my body is a protein producing machine based on environmental stimulus. And if my, my ability to produce those proteins gives me a longer life, if I have a shorter telomere, that's called premature aging. That is. Okay, now, telomere length represents biologic age as opposed to our chronologic age. So when I jokingly say that I work as hard as two 30 year olds, even though I'm 61, okay. That, that means that, that you're able to produce more proteins or to have that more energy. Does that, it's, it's also a slam on a couple of 30-year-olds. <laughs> Again, sarcasm you can't use anymore because it's too real. There has to be a contrast. Okay. Now, oh, this is brilliant. Science by scientist. Okay. Telomeres are like a mitotic clock, so it's really... In addition, it's become more apparent that accelerated telomere erosion 
is associated with a myriad of metabolic and inflammatory diseases, leading to genomic instability and the cornerstone for carcinogenesis. So this literally means if your telomeres aren't long and healthy and you're producing healthy amounts of, of certain proteins, okay, that what, what can stop, stop it? Metabolic and inflammatory diseases. What is inflammatory diseases? It's actually tissue damage. So you have to have tissue damage. So does that mean if you have a damaged intestinal tract, your body is not gonna be able to produce um, healthy proteins in order to regenerate tissue, it's gonna be causing, or, or it's the, those proteins are gonna be utilized to repair that tissue. So inflammation is a repair process, not a demon attacking it, okay, attacking your body. So that's huge. Um, t telomere length and, and blood and mortality in people over 60. Okay, heart disease, infectious diseases, short telomeres. Why? Because that's tissue damage, and the body is going to put more of its energy on healing that tissue instead of regenerating new tissue. This was a bitching case study, okay? Chiropractic biophysics did it. And they had a 35-year-old woman that was involved in an accident, and, she, and you're talking, I mean, a lot of stuff. Autonomic nervous system adaptability, a noctal polyuria, so, you know, getting up every few minutes at night to, to urinate. I mean, really, really miserable. After a um, series of adjustments, 36 visits, a blood test showed a significant improvement in telomere length and heart rate variability and improvement to health risk to within normal limits. So what, what does that mean? Now, this is a neck of somebody that has most of the curve lost. It should be curved in. We're looking at her heart rate variability, low functioning parasympathetic. So this is, you're looking, you're actually looking at tissue damage, looking at, at um, a reverse curve in the neck, which means the posterior longitudinal ligament was damaged in an injury. You're looking at distortion of the bone, so this has been damaged over 10 years. So if you have a neck that pain for over 10 years and it's negatively affecting how your body reproduces itself, does that change genetic expression? Absolutely. Okay, so if somebody is presenting with a metabolic or inflammatory disease, that body is responding correctly. If they're presenting with fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue, the body is responding correctly. And I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, when I tell people that, it blows their mind. It's like, wait a second. I thought, I thought the disease is going to kill me. Well, it may until you pull out of it. But right now, your body is responding correctly based on the stimulus. This autonomic system is everything. This is how, when you know that it, when, you, when you know this autonomic nervous system will raise your blood pressure or lower it. Okay, so when someone says, oh my God, my blood pressure is so high. They said it was really high. And I said, yeah, it should be. You know, you didn't breathe 10 minutes before you took it. Okay, you're probably stressed. Anybody got white coat syndrome in here? Yeah, that was my Halloween outfit last year. It was, well, the year before. It, I was, but I couldn't put it on because it would scare the kids. Okay, so... Now, so what kind of things can turn on and turn off genes? Um, ben Olus Kellis, MIT professor, says there's about a 150 billion things that can affect genetic expression. 150 billion. So, so that means that you can think about something. You can physically experience something. You can have toxicity or deficiency. I, I mean, it's amazing. Sponsored by GlaxoSmithKline. Epigenetics, or how the genome of living things is organized and managed. Mismanaged and disorganized gene epigenomes lead to disease. Wow, that makes sense. So imagine this. Instead of doctors treating the disease, they look at why the body is adapting to the stress, and they look for the physical, chemical, and emotional stress. Go on, say it with me. Wow! That would revolutionize the whole world. <laughs> Ain't going to happen this life. Okay, so um, what kind of things alter genetic expression? This is why there's a challenge. I mean, there's some, there's some doctors breaking from the pack. Um, epigenetics. Can, genes can be turned on or turned off. What kind of things alter genetic expression? Cholesterol-lowering drugs, antidepressant, beta blockers, diuretics. All those are blood pressure drugs. Um, Anti-inflammatories. Why? Because inflammation is how the body heals, and you don't want to stop that inflammation process. Um, antiseptics, contraceptives, antibiotics. Really? So those alter genetic expression. What kind of diseases would result from altering genetic expression? Oh, heart disease, cancer, mental disorders, obesity, diabetes, leukemia, 
bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, infertility, and sexual dysfunction. Wow, do we have a, do we have a community um, that has and experiencing this? Yeah, you're talking one in two cancer rates. Okay, this is in, insane. Antibiotics weaken the immune system, and this is at a cell, host, and microbe. Um, we look at this, steroids, known to be immune suppressive. This is out of ES um, Mupin, or British, that's British Medical Journal. Sorry, I know I went back and forward. Okay. Journal infectious diseases, antipyretics weaken the immune system. Why would something that reduce a fever weaken an immune system? Because for every one degree increase in temperature, the speed of the immune system doubles. Okay, that's actually a normal response, a normal response. Type 2 diabetes genetic? I don't think so. Okay, in fact, there's no data to support that. It runs in your family? No, it doesn't. Toxic food and stress will run in your family. Okay, not not type 2 diabetes. In fact, they used to call type 2 diabetes adult onset. And they had to change the name from adult onset to type 2 because so many kids were being poisoned. The reason it was adult onset is because you had to poison your body for years, so you got too much sugar in there, and the insulin that your body produced wasn't working correctly because you developed insulin resistance. That insulin is designed to get the sugar out of the cells. And type 2 diabetes, which is 95% of all diabetics, they can go away if you change your diet and exercise and stress level. So is that a disease or an adaptation? Let's look at the Journal of Autoimmunity. Uh-oh. Infectious vaccines and other environmental triggers. Vaccines turned, oh, vaccines and several reports were found to be temporarily uh, followed by a new set of autoimmune conditions. Sorry, I cannot show this slide because the sensors will wipe this out. But it is in the Journal of Autoimmunity, should you want to read it, and it's available at the National Institute of Health, um, and it was from 2005, should you be interested. The sensors will not allow me. Glyphosates, I don't know, Victor, is glyphosates, or is Monsanto or Monsatan still? Well, let's give it a shot. Okay, this is a carcinogen, okay? It's also called glyphosates. Waiting for Monsanto lightning bolt to strike me down. Okay, it's a mineral chelator, which without minerals, you can't utilize vitamins. It's an antibiotic, which destroys the gut flora. This is poisonous. Okay, and if you ever remember DDT, they just found a few hundred barrels of it off the coast between here and Catalina. I guess the company was, was going out of business. They were supposed to dispose of it. And just like, you know, most gun owners in America, okay, if you're curious and they come to collect your guns, you know what you say? Just what that company said. Dude, they were on the boat and they just fell over. Okay, but DDT is poisonous. Okay, it's not good. This stuff is poisonous. It's not good. BT toxins found in the pregnant women, this is supposed to be for cattle food. And that's why the Fraud and Deception Association said it's generally recognized as safe. It's grass, okay? Um, and they said, look, pregnant women aren't going to eat it. However, they get exposed to it. Um, oh, can't show that one either. That's Journal of Public Health and Epidemiology. Okay, so when we look at our kids, are they genetically defective? Or are they expressing themselves correctly based on the stimulus? I know that's, that's going to hurt the brains of a lot of people because you're going to think, when was the last time? When, like like if, if, you're, if you're over 30 or 40, okay? Did you ever see a pediatric physical therapy a, a place? Were there kidney dialysis machines in your community? Or is this a new experience? 70% of Americans aged 17 to 24 are unfit to serve in the military because of a chronic illness, obesity, asthma, hearing, eyesight problems, mental illness. I just saw an ad for the CIA um, that's advertising that you can have an emotional illness and work for the Central Intelligence Agency. Wow. This child here, ulcerative colitis, do you think it's genetic, okay, or genetic expression? Do you think that, that he is developing this because of a toxic and deficient environment that he's genetically defective or he's doing everything he can to adapt and survive in this environment? Yeah, questions that we can't ask right now. Idiopathic, root word, idiot. We don't know what it is, so what do you say? You say God's will or it's genetic. 
Okay, why? Because you're not going to look at the toxicity and deficiency that these kids are experiencing. So how do you alter genetic expression? One, you live according to your genetic makeup. Okay, realize that you need a microbiome inside of your body on your skin. You were designed to live on this planet. You need healthy, organic food. You need to eat just the way your great-grandpa ate. Okay? Well, actually, great-great-grandpa. There's some kids over there that grandpa's probably my age. <laughs> okay. Organic, healthy fats, fermented vegetables. Look at the fermented vegetables. I mean, we got some, some people here from Alaska. They're going to eat their summer vegetables in the winter after fermentation. That's bitching. Okay, that's, that, that's just amazing. Nearly every fruit and vegetable has inhibitory factors to um, nuclear factor catabolite chain and cancer of activated B cells. This is, this is something that causes damage to cells and is linked to cancer, Alzheimer's, Crohn's disease, uh, osteoporosis, septic shock, all of these things. And fruit and vegetables added to your diet inhibits that. Does that mean a plant-based organic diet is good for you? Yes. Yes. Do we need animal products as well? Yeah, healthy animal products. There's no vegan cultures on the planet. Okay, but there are vegetarian cultures that have been around for forever. Okay, but you need animals in order to support the farming industry. God knows what they're going to do with the synthetic meats, but, you know, fermented foods daily, omega-3s, absolutely vital. Okay, you need this from, you know, chico pescados, I mean, small fish like anchovy, mackerel, sardines. Um, vitamin D levels, super important. If you're using tons of sunblock and putting it on the kids, that's not good for them. Okay, give them small bits of exposure. You can use a, a thing called a hat, okay, to shield yourself. You can use coconut oil. But I mean, if you're in the sun long enough, you'd start to develop melanin and resistance. Vitamin D deficiency disorders. How about? Oh, wait, I don't think I can say anything about vitamins. Okay, well, lack of vitamins, digestive disorders, osteoporosis, mental disorders, neurodevelopment disorders, chronic infections, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and autoimmune. I can't say that vitamin D supplements will help this because that would get me kicked off. But I can say that the deficiencies of this are linked to this. Thank you, comrade. Okay. Adrenals and stress, depression, memory loss, weakened immune system. So it's not the adrenals. It's not the adrenals. It's not the thyroid. Okay. The body is expressing itself correctly based on the stimuli. Does that make sense? And that when you look at the thyroid, thyroid's been blamed for everything. But how many people are taking chlorine and bromine, okay, and fluoride, which are mimic iodine if you're deficient in iodine? How many people are living on the West Coast or North America that's getting the radioactive iodine from Fukushima? You know, iodine supplements, it makes sense. Now, you need to have proper nerve supply. Why? Because that's how your body views itself. You need to have proper exercise. Why? Because movement stimulates that brain function, improve brain function, heart disease, cancer. Isn't that weird that, that these things, a diet high in plants helps with cancer, Alzheimer's, and chronic disease. Exercise helps with, diet, with, with cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. That's so weird. Breathing helps with the parasympathetic, with, helps with cancer, heart disease, and everything. Okay, I mean, why aren't we breathing this? So realize that your genetics are a thousand generations. Okay, a thousand generations. You pass on good stuff. Like if you, if you say, no, no, my grandparent gave me sickle cell anemia. Yeah, that means you're protected from malaria. Okay, the, all these different diseases or have been adaptations that let your family survive. It's brilliant. So express your genes correctly. Live according to your genetic makeup. You don't need to be afraid of this environment. Just do things. The physical, chemical, and emotional stress, deal with those effectively, and you're going to be able to thrive on the planet. You're supposed to make it to 120. Um, we're... What, we're going to be stopping the feed now on Facebook and YouTube, okay? Because we don't want to go to Facebook jail or YouTube jail. I know they're shadow banning it. They, they demonetized us. Um, they're doing a lot of things to make us stop this. 
Um, but luckily, last week, I was speaking out in an event in L.A., which was really bizarre. Oh, my God. If you haven't been to L.A., there is a massive homeless encampment everywhere except Beverly Hills. Okay? I mean, literally, you go up, and there's Wilshire, and there's Beverly Hills. Tents are like galore all below it, but nothing above. I guess the sidewalks are too expensive. Okay, we're all set? Oh, oh. So I've got to say goodbye. We're not getting cut off um, by the powers that be yet, but we are getting cut off by Victor because we have to put on the censorable stuff, the stuff that you can't be. But if you're on Dr. B VIP, don't worry about it. You're still going to get it.